Hello, this is Ross Beck, the author of The Gartley Trading Method, and what we're going to be doing right now is looking at the comparison of a typical Gartley pattern and using the Beck's emblem to filter your Gartley patterns to give you even more accurate results. So what we see here on the screen is your typical X, A, B, C, and now we're looking for the D point of a um, Gartley pattern. As you can see, the most obvious part of this pattern that really jumps off the screen is the symmetry between the A, B, and, and the potential C, D leg. If you got symmetry between those two legs, uh, you might have a valid Gartley pattern. So the best way to find out if those two legs are similar to each other is to use the price extension tool. So I'll use that in Market Analyst. We go to Tools levels and go to price extension. We start from the A point down here and we measure the range from that low up to the high here at B. So there's my second click and now my third click is down on the low here at C. I do my final click in it and it drops it there. So now let's add the Fibonacci retracement. What we need to do is we measure the range from X down to A, but to use that tool, we'll go to Tools, we go to Levels, we go to Price Retracements. Now I'm going to click the high here at X, and then I go to click the low at A. So that's our uh, trend move. We measure that. We can see that there's a clustering right here. The expectation according to um, the Gartley trading method, uh, one of the methods of entering is right on the Fibonacci number. If the market goes up and touches this blue line, that would be a sell signal. Now, with this type of trade setup, where do we put our stop? As Gartley pointed out in his book, that we'd put it right above this point here at 119.59. But I just want to show you uh, something I came across in, in writing the Gartley trading method book and I refer to it as Beck's emblem. Now this is a tool that you can get as part of the Beck's toolkit in Market Analyst and I just wanted to show you how it works. So to draw the Beck's emblem what you need to do is you go under tools, go to Beck and then you go here to Beck's emblem. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the Beck's emblem and remember how we drew the Fibonacci retracement level? We chose the X point, chose the A point. We're going to do exactly the same thing as drawing that Fibonacci retracement, but we're going to use the Bex emblem this time. Down to this low here. One of the other tools I like to use for gauging the end, the D point, is the quadrilateral drawing tool. If you want to find it in your tools, you go under a geometric tools and you can see it there, quadrilateral. So I'm to draw the quadrilateral from the A point to the B point. So remember those two first two clicks that we used for the price extension? Same two points that we used for the quad. But this time now we're going to drag this over here and we want to line up the quad with the C point. It's lined up perfectly that C point. So the quadrilaterals is much like the price extension tool that gives you an idea as to where the market's going to go. So if you look at the very tip of this quad it's saying that the market in price and time should reverse right in this general area here. Uh, there's the B point and here's a C point, but sometimes you have a low that might be close to the C point. We're saying maybe it's actually this point here. Even though it's a little bit higher, maybe psychologically you can see the market did take off from this, this low here. Maybe we should be plotting the quadrilateral on uh, this low versus this low. And the answer is yes, you should actually move this C, the C, I'm going to move this C up to here. I think that's where C is now. Why? If I drew a trend line from this low here, and I'm trying to draw it on the lows here, right? So there's two points. Here's three points. There's one, two, three, 
Look at this, the fourth point. Look at this trend line's holding right there, isn't it? Okay, this is where the C point should be. If you have a, a can draw a trend line and it connects with four places like this, by no means should you use this as the C point. You should use it right here. This is something that you can do even without the quadrilateral tool. You can draw a trend line there, copy it and paste it on the other side here, and I'll give you an idea where the quad's going. This Bex emblem here has a lot of angles and people don't necessarily like the those angles because they can change. Look at this. The more, if I squeeze more bars onto the chart, those angles, they'll change, right? What I need to do is find out what is the proper angle that these lines should be at. Now, the quad's going to help us with that. You notice, remember those four lows here? Actually, it looks like there's another one here. One, two, three, four, maybe five lows here. Uh, let me adjust the quad to reflect that new spot where I want this low to be the C point. Now, what that's done, it's made our quad give us a higher price to get into the trade. So we're getting a bit more accurate reversal area. Now I've applied the Bex emblem to the chart here and there's all kinds of angles. The, the idea when I looked, did the research with the Gartley pattern is I looked at the X to A point and the slope of that uh, price action tells you a lot about what's going to happen, where the reverse is going to take place. If you notice that this first line here is part of a, a square that's within the circle, and I just want to show that there's a relationship between the X to A movement and the places where you expect the market to reverse, these additional angles that are derived from the circle, the square, and the first triangle. And this is how it works. Leave your geometric lock off, which allows you to do this. You know, it's how you can um, move the angles. When we're trying to determine the price and the time uh, lock, the geometric lock, we wonder, okay, what is the ratio? The way that you calculate this is by finding, remember those lows here? You want those to all connect with this side of the square. Let's swing this over so it lines up. Okay, there you go. Now remember those four lows on the quad, they all line up with this side of the square now. And we can see there was a brief hesitation here before it broke through this first line. It goes up to here and definitely respected this resistance level. When it managed to break through clearly, it stopped and hesitated for uh, a few days here. This is a daily chart, so actually it's more like a week. And then it comes up here. Now, once we've identified the time and the price, ratio what we can do is we can lock it up so it doesn't keep changing on us so now when I go to add some more bars you can see what happens now it's not going to move it's it's locked that quad onto the Bex emblem now the tip of the quad is going to tell us which angle the market should reverse at now if the tip of the quad was closer to this angle here the expectation would be that yes this is where the reversal will take place on this angle the tip of the quad is is actually closer to this angle versus this one so therefore this quad is telling you chance Chances are the market is going to reverse on this angle over here and you can see it does that almost to the tick so if we turn on our price retracement remember that was going to be our entry point before you would have entered right here at 115 29 if you waited until it got up to here you'd be looking at 117 23 about 200 points difference between your typical 78.6% uh, retracement and using the Bex emblem to, to enter the market here. And look at the accuracy. This is a nice trade, but man, wouldn't you like it if, if you could get in right there? You notice also what's interesting about this is the intersections. See where these two lines intersect? There typically is a reversal and, and you can see almost to the day that there was. So you have a price and a time reversal right here at this angle in the Bex emblem. So what this does for us uh, is it just makes it a little bit more accurate in uh, our entry of the Gartley pattern. Prior to the discovery of the Bex emblem, we would have been entering at 78.6. Personally, I don't use the Fibonacci ratios anymore. I simply use these angles that are generated by these geometric shapes of the circle, square, and the triangle. Those are shapes that WD GAN referred to. Really, geometry is what is driving the markets when it comes to technical analysis. Everyone can have their theories, but really it is the geometry that people on the subconscious level are, are looking for. So, 
in a nutshell, that's how you use the quadrilateral along with the Bex emblem to give you better entry signals.